we are looking at uh, the function 1 over x, we're obviously zoomed in on a specific piece of it. it I know it doesn't look very much like 1 over x, um, but I've kind of zoomed in here so that you can uh, draw on it pretty accurately. We are only going between x equals 1 and x equals 5, and they tell us to use four midpoint rectangles. So as usual, let's go ahead and start by splitting up our interval into our four even partitions. So we've got from 1 to 2 is our first uh, partition, 2 to 3 is the second one, 3 to 4 is the third one, 4 to 5 is the fourth one. So as the name says, midpoint rectangle, instead of starting on the left side of this interval or on the right side of this interval um, to find the height, we're going to going to go to the middle of that first partition. So we're going to go to 1.5. We're going to go to its value on the curve, and that is going to create the height of our first rectangle. Then we're going to go to the midpoint of the next interval, 2.5. We're going to go to its y value on the curve, and that is going to be the height of that rectangle. And we go over to 3.5, and then finally 4.5. Now I think it is quite obvious that this is definitely going to be a better approximation than either the left-handed or the right-handed because for each rectangle we have a little bit of an under-approximation, but then we also have a little bit of an over-approximation. So they kind of balance each other out. They're not exactly the same amount on each side, but it is more of a balance than just the straight-up left or right-handed rectangles. Um, yes, sir. No, you can use these on any function. It's just you have to be familiar with each type because they will ask you to use just a specific one. Okay, um, but we are still our goal here is to find the best approximation that we can. Um, so we're we're headed towards that. Each one we do here is a better approximation than the previous. Okay, now obviously I don't have the y values labeled here, but we have the function. Okay, so one over x. Um, I'm going to express these values as fractions because that's much easier to um, deal with without a calculator. So 1 over 3 over 2 would be 2 thirds, and the width of this rectangle is just 1, so that's nice. Um, 1 over 5 halves is 2 fifths, again the width is 1. Um, 1 over 7 over 2 is 2 over 7. Okay, I think it's pretty clear that these rectangles are getting shorter, so their areas are getting smaller. And then, of course, we need to add those all together. Not going to lie, at this point, I'm not getting a common denominator with 3, 5, 7, and 9. I'm just going to use my calculator. 2 thirds plus 2 fifths plus two sevenths, plus two ninths. And whew, that's quite the fraction. Obviously, I know it's less than two, but it's not exactly pretty. Yes, sir? Did I do something wrong? Or do you have a question? Okay. Because the heights are the y values, so the function is 1 over x. So 1 over 3 over 2 is 2 over 3. Okay. So the Right, because the height is determined by the y value at the midpoint of the interval. Yeah, yeah on this one I did. Uh, well, apparently 315. Yeah. So no, I mean this is this would be this would be a calculator active question. They they are not going to ask you to manipulate numbers that are much bigger, really, than like 50 probably. As far as finding a common denominator, I don't see them asking you to do that without a calculator. Okay. 
um, because, I mean, that, that's going to take you forever, and that's not what they're trying to test you on. They're not trying to test you on your um, uh, arithmetic skills. They're trying to test you know how to find midpoint rectangles and approximate this area. Um, so really, on these, most of these are calculator active questions because there's not there's not a way to do it on your calculator without doing the where you still have to set up the problem the only thing to do on the calculator is to crunch the numbers um, as opposed to calculating a definite integral your calculator will do that so those are going to be inactive questions because they're trying to test to see if you know your antiderivatives okay okay so um, let's look at another type of approximation Let's look at trapezoids. Okay, so we have the function here, negative x squared plus 9. And yeah, I know my function's on two lines, but that is negative x squared plus 9. And the x-axis between 0 and 3, and we're going to use three trapezoids. So again, we need to split up our interval into equal partitions. So 0 to 1, 1 to 2, 2 to 3. And we're going to draw trapezoids. So for our first interval from 0 to 1, okay, um, the base, well let me draw it all in before I start talking about that, okay. Um, so you take the y value of the beginning of your interval, take the y value of the end of your interval, so 0 to 1, first y value is 9, second one is 8, and then we're going to connect those two y values and that is going to form our trapezoid. You may need to kind of turn your head to the right to see the trapezoid. Now, it's not a trapezoid with two slanted sides. Okay, trapezoids don't have to have two slanted sides. They just have to have one, at least. Okay, so this is a trapezoid. Um, do y'all want to find the area of that one, or do you want to go ahead and draw the other ones first? Okay, let's go ahead and draw the other ones in. Okay, so for uh, 1 to 2, I already have my y value at 1. I need to locate my y value at 2 and connect those two y values. You can obviously see that that straight line is very, very close to the curve. Um, there may not really be much of a distinction. I know there's definitely not much of a distinction on mine because my pen is so thick. There may not be much of a distinction on yours either. Okay, uh, now 2 to 3 is not really a trapezoid. What is 2 to 3? 2 to 3 is actually a triangle. Um, but that rarely happens. It just happens in this case since 3 is on the x-axis. Okay. So, if you will recall, the area formula for a trapezoid is, bless you, 1 half times base 1 plus base 2 times the height. Okay, now in this case, the bases are actually on the left and the right. Okay, the bases are on the left and the right if you're looking at your paper straight on. If you turn your head and you look at it the way we're used to looking at a rectangle or a trapezoid, then yeah, it's the top and the bottom, but looking straight on, the bases are actually the left and the right. Now, since all of these are going to have a one-half in it, I'm going to make my calculations easier, and I'm just going to keep the one-half out in the front. Okay, so I don't have to do that in every single um, step here. So the first trapezoid there, base one, and it doesn't matter which order you do this in, I always just start on the left. So base one is nine, base two would be eight, its height, is 1. Okay, so we have 9 plus 8 times 1 plus the second one, base 1 would be 8, base 2 is 5, the height is 1, so we have 8 plus 5 times 1 plus the last one if you want to approach it just as a triangle, that's fine. Since we're talking about trapezoids, I am going to say base 1 is 5, base 2 would be 0, and the height is 1. 
so you can see how the triangle and trapezoid um, formulas are similar there. And then we can just crunch the numbers. Okay, 9 plus 8 is 17. 8 plus 5 is 13. 5 plus 1 is, or excuse me, 5 plus 0 is 5. So that is 1 half times 35, which is 17.5, is the approximate area under this curve. Now I know, obviously, this graph didn't look as big as the previous example's graph, but it had much greater area. It just has to do with the scale that I have there, okay? Um, and this one, to get it all on the paper, smaller scale. The other one I've had more room, so it's on a larger scale. So don't be thrown off by that. Okay, so this is the best approximation that we've had so far because you can see where these trapezoids leave very little space between um, the, the area that we're shading in and the actual area under the curve. So we have our rectangles, where if we increase the number of intervals, then we get better approximations. Okay, the fewer number of uh, partitions we have, the least or the less accurate our approximation is. So we did rectangles left and right. Then we did midpoint rectangles, which were better because we got a little bit of an under approximation and an over approximation with each one. And then trapezoids uh, clearly are the best approximation that we have so far. So you just have to be able to operate with all of those because they will ask you to use various ones with various functions. You just need to know the difference. Yes? So a little more from Sam. Will the answer to this question be the approximation or like the actual value? It will be the approximation. If they ask you to approximate, it will be the approximation using that so You will have to know like this is slightly an underestimate. So. Well, they may ask you, I've seen questions that um, say if this is the function, uh, order the approximations um, in, in order from least to greatest. And they'll say left-handed rectangle, right-handed rectangle, midpoint, and trapezoid. Um, and so you've got you've got to understand based on whether the function is concave up or concave down, you know, which ones are going to be over approximations and, and so forth and so on. Okay, so you need to have that in the back of your mind as you're doing these. Um, notice the concavity, when it's an over approximation, when it's an under approximation based on the concavity. Okay.